The ACU women's basketball team welcomes the SEC's Arkansas Razorbacks to Moody. I'm Max Preston. And I'm Grant Boone. We'll preview that huge game against the Hogs and also take a look at the team's terrific start to this season. This is the Julie Goodenough Show right now. Welcome into the pilot episode of the Julie Goodenough Show as we take you inside women's basketball at Abilene Christian University for this 2018-19 season. I'm Grant Boone alongside ACU senior journalism major Max Preston and the head basketball coach of the ACU women's basketball program, Julie Goodenough. Coach, what a great time to tip this show off. We've got the University of Arkansas Razorbacks of the SEC coming to Moody Coliseum on Saturday. Uh, you've got a, a, a seven and one start to the season. This is a good time. Isn't it, it? it really is. You know, it's hard to believe it's already December, but um, we've had a lot of fun up to this point in the season. And we do have a really exciting game coming up this Saturday. And uh, I was talking to a lot of staff members this morning in our staff senators meeting saying we need every staff yeah. member on campus to be at this game Saturday to help cheer us on. Coach, congrats on the big 7-1 Thank start you. to the season and good luck the rest of the way. Uh, through these eight games, though, is there a specific factor or reason that your team's playing so well so far? Gosh, you know, I really credit um, the large number of juniors that we have, and Sarah Williamson's our one senior. But we went from being one of the, the youngest teams in America last year to actually having kind of a veteran squad as far as juniors and seniors. Uh, we, we have the same number of upperclassmen as we do sophomore and freshmen. And, you know, they've been with us for a couple of years, and they understand the work, ethics, the work ethic that is required. They understand how intense practice needs to be. So, you know, I really credit uh, Sarah and all the juniors with just leading the charge and setting the tone in practice every day. Now the Wildcats will try to keep it going this Saturday against the University of Arkansas. We'll preview that game in just a bit. But when we come back, highlights and the coach's analysis of this 7-1 and one start to the season. Stay with us. This is the Julie Goodenough Show. Glad to have you with us for the Julie Goodenough Show. Coach, let's look back at this terrific start to the season. You're 7-1. and one. You, you ease into this campaign with three games against non-Division I teams, and we see every year there is always a non-Division I that knocks off uh, a Division I team, so we, we never take those wins for granted. But what did those three games uh, against Southwest, against Howard Payne, and against Eastern New Mexico, an NAIA, a Division II, a Division III team, what did they do for your team's confidence? What did you learn about your team? Right. Well, our philosophy in scheduling is to play some games early to figure out how to win as a team. Mm. And uh, I think our best opportunity to win is at home. So we try to get at least the first, hopefully the second uh, game at home just to play in front of our home crowd, to figure out how to win together as a team. Um, this year we were able to put three games together at home before we hit the road. And I think it really helps your team just, uh, you know, get into a game day routine and have some success early on in the season. So you go on the road for the first time after those three games. You go to the place where I was born, Las Cruces, New Mexico, uh, and you take on the Aggies. This is a team that, you know, is a top contender in the WAC conference. But however you get the win, you uh, get double-digit scoring from Brianna, Dominique, Sarah, and you get a 21-point fourth quarter that helps you win the game. So this is your first win over a Division I opponent. How did it feel to get it over this team, especially on the road? Gosh, this is a really big challenge for us. As you mentioned, uh, you know, New Mexico State's been the WAC favorite for four or five years. They're the favorite to win again this year. And so to go into their house and I, I think just be as prepared as our team was, was a huge advantage. And, you know, the players that talked about uh, when we were on the road, like, you know, we are so prepared. Y'all give us all this information in these scouting reports, you know, like it was some, you know, big, you know, mystery thing. But uh, they were like, we were, we were really prepared for that game. And uh, I thought that our players did a really nice job carrying over what we had worked on in practice into the game and seeing that things that we had prepared them for actually worked. And so uh, just the way they handled themselves going on this first business trip, being very businesslike about our practice there, mm -hmm. our shoot around, uh, just really proud about the way they approached it. It was a long business trip because you went from Las Cruces <laughs> to El Paso for a, a Thanksgiving Day tournament. And, and you, you, in your time here at ACU, have always tried to get your team into at least one tournament in the non-conference to hopefully get them prepared for what it would be like in the Southland Conference tournament. And who knows, maybe the NCAA tournament someday. It's always difficult, I think, for any team to come off of a big win 
and to play well the next game. Well, did you ever play well? You took on Texas Southern. You held them to less than 20% shooting, uh, and, and Bree Wright flirts with a triple-double. How difficult is it? Why is it difficult so often, even though your team did it? Why is it so often tough to, to follow up the big win and play well the next game? Gosh, you know, uh, with your basketball season, most of the time you don't have a whole lot of time to yeah. celebrate, nor do you have a whole lot of time to pout because your games come so quickly. Um, but I, I'll tell you, we, we had a huge advantage on this trip because we played it at, at uh, New Mexico State, won a really hard-fought battle. But we've been working for a couple of years to get to El Paso. We have two players on our team from El Paso. Uh, so we were well taken care of. Um, we left Las Cruces to go to El Paso. We had a good workout. Had a great meal at Pamela Herrera's house. Thanksgiving, and, yeah. And Kayla Galindo <laughs> was over there. And this was the day before Thanksgiving. Right. So then Thanksgiving Day, we're able to, to work out at 8 o'clock in the morning. You know, we had a great workout preparing for Texas Southern. And then uh, we, we had an El Paso Country Club, and it was one of the finest meals that I've ever had with the team. You can ask nice. our bus driver. Yeah. He's still talking about Robin Walls is talking about what a, what a treat that was. And we had a lot of family members go with us, and it was just an awesome Thanksgiving. And so our ability just to stay basically in one area and not have to, like, travel Good. very far from yeah. Las Cruces to, um, to UTEP I think was a huge advantage for us. Um, Coach Lambert had the Texas Southern Scouting Report, and we really felt like this is a game that may come down to the last few possessions. And honestly, we were just shocked at how well our team came out. We knocked down open shots um, defensively. It was a great defensive game. We forced lots of turnovers early that uh, contributed to a lot of our, our quick and early offense scoring in transition. Uh, we were super proud of just the way, again, our players approached that game. And, and I think we had an advantage because we were there in El Paso for a couple of days. We weren't traveling like Texas Southern had to do. Mm. And um, you know, our players just did an amazing job with that game. So, Coach, you know, as, or, as Grant mentioned, you would play UTEP, the host of the tournament. Uh, you had a 23-8 to lead after the first quarter. Uh, but the Miners found their way back in the second half. However, you hold on to the game. Dominic gets a three-pointer late in the game. Brianna Wright knocks down two clutch free throws to win the game. Uh, you probably want to hang on to that blowout, but to play in a close game this early in the season, how does it feel to get the win and come out on top in that close game? Uh, you know, the UTEP game, the way it, it all worked out and the way it ended up, it was exactly what we needed at that time in the season. Um, Coach DeRue did a great job with a 24-hour turnaround getting us ready for oh. that scout. You know, we basically just walked through information uh, that he shared with the team. We watched some video before we went to the gym. Uh, but that's tough. I mean, that's a really good team. Uh, they are, are really good at home, and uh, we knew that it was going to be a tough battle. But I love the way our starters started the game. They've been very consistent about starting the game off well for us. And uh, little did we know we needed that uh, big cushion in the first quarter. But um, our uh, defense was not very good in the second half, to be quite honest. As well as we have played defensively the day before, we had a lot of defensive lapses, and we kept trying to make adjustments during the game. Uh, UTEP played very, very well. And, uh, their home floor. Their home floor, and their crowd's unbelievable. Their band is the reason you want to band at basketball games. They <laughs> harassed us literally the whole game, and you can't let them know that you're listening or it gets even worse, but yeah. they were – Incredible, uh, incredible um, atmosphere there for women's basketball. But uh, just, you know, credit our team for just, uh, you know, staying poised and having some composure down the stretch. In order to win the game, we had to get a stop, score, and get a stop. And that's exactly what our players did. And it was just a hard-fought battle and, and one that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll cherish that win for a long time. It was, it was tough and uh, really took the whole team to get that done. Well, here's something, a little bit of foreshadowing. If you get a top two seed in the Southland Conference Tournament, you have to win two games on back-to-back -back days to make it to the NCAA Tournament. So you get back-to-back -back wins in a tournament setting, mm -hmm. hostile territory. Now, just saying, Got a little experience. foreshadowing. Um, you then have a really tough turnaround. You come back, long bus ride home. Then you have only really one full day at home. Then you get back on the bus. You go to Tulsa, a team from the American Athletic Conference, which also houses the dominant program in women's basketball, UConn. You have 22 turnovers against Tulsa, and yet it's a competitive game. You, you wind up losing by 12. I know the, fr the, the turnovers frustrated you. Would you say that of those 22 turnovers, what percentage would you say were, were just mistakes on your part? How much of it? You always have to credit the other team sure, because sure. they're taking it away from you. Uh, what what was the breakdown as you looked at that? Yeah, gosh, uh, we had a great trip there. I felt like we were well prepared. Um, 
you know, had a couple of days to get ready for the game. But, gosh, we just seemed like we were not very mentally sharp in the game. Uh, had way too many careless turnovers. And, and I will credit Tulsa with some of those. But about 50% were just on us, just not reading the defense, passing the ball right into the defender's hands. Mm. Um, so as sharp as we were the, the week before in the, those three games on the road, uh, we were the opposite at Tulsa. I just felt like just mentally we weren't really into the game. And I don't know if the travel had taken a toll on us. Um, you know, we had played five games in a pretty short period short, of time yeah. where we're Eight asking days. them to learn a lot of information, you know, and to purge information and to learn new information. And so, I, you know, I thought at halftime we were tied and I felt like we were down by 15 the way we were playing. And uh, so our, our team, you know, they, they hit shots when we had them. We just didn't make very good decisions. Um, but, you know, they, they responded from that well. Uh, we were not very happy after the game, and they weren't either. And I think it speaks volumes about our culture that we really expect to go on the road and beat a team in the American Conference. And I think that just says, you know, how we've grown and, and what our team thinks about themselves. But, um, and again, that loss was probably a good wake-up call for us at a good point in the season where hopefully we won't make some of those same mistakes again. It's not a bad Tulsa team, by Correct. the way. They went and beat Alabama, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> yeah. just a couple of days later. Yeah, so, Coach, you come home, you play Shriner, a much-needed game after that long road trip. Um, you get uh, 25 points from Lexi Duque and eight rebounds. She has a good game, and you cruise to an easy 90-43 to win. Is this the kind of confidence booster game you need before Arkansas? Absolutely, and just the opportunity to play at home. We were uh, we were pretty homesick. We were ready to come home and play in Moody, play in front of our crowd, and so it was uh, a really good timing as far as having a home game. And I was just really proud of the way our, our team played and how they responded from the disappointing loss to come back. And again, our starters, you know, just they just you know rattle up eight points quick. It's 8-0. They call a timeout, so a great way to start. And um, you know, everybody got to play. Everybody really contributed. It was just a, it was a fun game, fun atmosphere, and uh, just great to be back home. And I know you think that games like that from Lexi Duque are, are, are the kind of, you know, performances that she can give you down the road, and you're going to need those as you get uh, closer to conference play. And, of course, you're going to need something like that from her or others or maybe from a lot of them as you play an SEC opponent this Saturday Arkansas comes to town to Moody Coliseum. We will preview that game in just a bit. But first, as we go to break, take a look at scores from around the Southland Conference. We've got more of the Julie Good Enough show in just a moment. Welcome back to the Julie Good Enough show. I'm Owen Simpson, and with me today is junior center Lexi Kurgan. Thank you for joining the show. Thank you for having me. Now, flashback before ACU. You played basketball at Bullard High School and led your team to a district championship your senior year, averaging a double-double. You decide ACU is the school for you. Now, three years into your stint here at ACU, what has surprised you in your time here, and why choose ACU in the first place? Um, honestly, I'm just surrounded by um, super great teammates and super great people, and um, just kind of really just great people all around, not just in the sports, but also professors. Um, anyway, and then whenever I was like choosing my colleges or like choosing the place I wanted to go, um, I had a checklist of everything that I wanted in the school, and ACU really marked off like every like check mark in the on the list. Anyway, so that was one of the main reasons why I chose the school because, you know, it had everything that I wanted. What exactly do you believe your role is to help benefit the team at the center position? Well, um, I just think my role here is just to constantly work hard and just to um, make my teammates better, you know. Um, also, like, I just constantly try to be a light for my teammates. And so, you know, just making them laugh and, you know, have fun, but like also just to be serious and um, just to get better. And so far this season, you girls have been doing something really special. You're seven and one and off to the, one of the best starts in recent memory. Mm -hmm. What specifically do you believe contributes to your team's success this early on? Um, I just think that the fact we're all on the same page, um, we all have the same end goal in mind, and so um, just being able to put that into action and just knowing that um, we all have the same interest in mind has really helped. Like, we, we can all trust each other, and, like, we know that um, we all want what each other wants, so. Up next, you face Arkansas this Saturday at home in Moody. Tell me, what is the atmosphere like and anticipation for this game? Um, we're super excited. Um, we're just going to treat this like any other game. But we did play Arkansas last year. We lost to them. It, it was a pretty close game the whole time, but we ended up um, losing. But anyway, we're just excited to, for them to be in Moody and um, just have all of our fans here, you know, just cheering us on and, you know, 
and end it with a win. All right. Well, best of luck. Thank you for joining me, Lexi. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Stay tuned. This is the Julie Good Enough Show. Welcome back to the Julie Good Enough Show. Take a look at the standings in the Southland Conference through the first month of the season. And ACU, as you can see, is on top at seven and one. Four teams are next with two losses in the non-conference portion of the season, which will continue for the next month or so. Now check out some of the upcoming games in the conference, including Central Arkansas squaring off against number 17 Texas A&M in College Station. All right, let's turn our attention now to ACU and one of the biggest games in any sport in ACU school history. The Wildcats welcome in, that's right, welcome in the University of Arkansas Razorbacks this Saturday at Moody Coliseum. Coach, you don't see power conference teams like from the SEC go on the road against an opponent from a smaller conference like the Southland and ACU. Just in terms of the scope, the magnitude of an SEC team coming to Abilene, Texas, how big is this? Yeah, uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you to Arkansas for the willingness to come and play. Um, we, I mean, we really struggle to get Division I teams overall to come to Moody. This is our only non-conference Division I opponent uh, to play us in Moody this year, and so we really appreciate Arkansas's willingness to do this. But it's a big deal, and like you said, I mean, Power 5 schools do not <laughs> travel to mid-majors. It's too much of a risk. Uh, most of the time, they play the majority of their fall season at home. They... Uh, you know, they, we they played get, them there last year. We did. We did. And we appreciate them returning the favor this year. And it's very, very uncommon. It's the first time we've had an SEC school come to Moody. And it very likely will be the one and only time a school comes here. And uh, so, we, you know, we're excited about it. It's a big deal. Uh, the thing that can really help us is to have a huge home court mm. atmosphere by just packing Moody. I mean, let's have 3,500, 4,000 fans there. Let's get the, the city of Abilene, the big country, all to come out. I mean, it's their opportunity to see in person an SEC school. And Arkansas is a very, very good SEC opponent, and uh, we're excited about them coming. But we do need a, a big crowd. It's Christmas slam. I yeah. know all the clubs are going to be out. We hope that faculty and staff will come out and enjoy the day. It's a double header. Um, so we're, we're excited about it. It's going to be a good weekend. Yeah, so as we're saying, this game will have a lot of hype leading in. It is Christmas Slam, as you mentioned, so you could probably expect a pretty big crowd for the game. Uh, and Grant also, I mean, we mentioned the SEC team, so that's a big deal. You have, to, you have to shut out the hype coming into this game, though. So how can you be prepared for this Arkansas team coming into Saturday? Well, as, as far as our prep time with our team, it's exactly how it's been for all of our, our previous opponents. We won't make a big deal out of it being Arkansas. Uh, it's the only game that we have this week, and so we have an opportunity to really focus on ourselves for a few days, which is exactly what you need this time of the year after you, you go from one scout to the next scout. And so now we've got a couple of days just to talk about Wildcat basketball and get better at, at things that we want to work on. Um, and then we have plenty of time to prepare for, for Arkansas. So the week has worked out really well for us. Um, it is Christmas slam. Uh, my staff and I will not be wearing ugly Christmas sweaters. Uh, we're, we're approaching this very game-like, very professional. If everyone else wants to wear ugly sweaters, I know that's kind of the theme. But please, you know, kind of back off your red because Arkansas, is, Arkansas. is, is a red right. color. So, you Go know, greens. just bring lots of green. I think you can do <laughs> purple for Christmas as well. And so uh, we're, we're just looking forward to the opportunity to host Arkansas. How about we Absolutely. make a deal? If you win the game, you put an ugly Christmas sweater on them. Is that a, Absolutely. Is that a deal? I'm okay. all, I, I all right. can do that. Absolutely. Um, so that's huge, obviously. But the rest of December, a couple of other huge games. You go to Florida Gulf Coast, one of the best mid-major teams in all of women's college basketball, and then you play Texas Tech, another power conference team. A lot of your fans know about Tech, obviously, that's only a couple of hours away. Not as many know about the Eagles. But you do, and people who follow women's college basketball know they came in here to Abilene last year. How impressed were you up close and in personal and, and in person with Florida Gulf Coast? And, and then in general, uh, they're, they're at it again this year, aren't they? Well, I, I mean, our staff, we obviously knew how good Florida Gulf Coast would be. And, you know, once again, we appreciated them coming to Abilene. They struggled to get non-conference Division One games, and so do we. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're going to go to their place this year. But... 
Uh, they are just, uh, they play with such a high basketball IQ. Any defensive lapses, they capitalize on that. Uh, they like to shoot threes. They like to shoot layups like we do. And so, you know, we want our program to evolve to be like Florida Gulf Coast. So it's really good that we get to see them up close and in person. And I'm sure when they rolled into town last year, you know, no one knew anything about them. Um, if you were not really following mid-major women's basketball, but, man, they were impressive. I mean, they put on a show here. And so, um, you know, I think the awe factor uh, is gone from last year. And, you know, we'll just approach the prep for that game like any other game. And, uh you know, take our best game on the road. Uh, so, yeah, December is, is really tough. One home game, three uh, games on the road before we start conference play. But uh, these next three opponents are, you know, I think it will challenge us and stretch us as a team. Uh, we, we talk a lot about being the best team on the floor. We don't have to have the best individuals, mm. but the team that plays the best together has the, the best opportunity to win. And so definitely in our next three games, we got to play that together as a team if we really want to have some success. Team first wins. Where have I heard yeah. that before? Uh, hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a month from now, you open conference with New Orleans. And when you think about it, when you start conference, you, you go back to zero and zero. And the team with the best Southland record gets the top seed in the postseason tournament, regardless of overall record. So in these non-conference games this next month, what do you want to see out of your team? What do you want to see them improve or achieve? Well, um, Coach Daru helps me put our schedule together, and we feel like this has been a very challenging non-conference schedule. And like we've talked about, it's just going to get tougher from now until um, we start conference play. But that's what you want. You want to be challenged. You want to be challenged on the road. You want to go on some long bus trips just to, to get you acclimated to that and ready to play conference games. Um, you know, we'd like to roll into New Orleans maybe on a, a little bit of a winning streak or just having some confidence coming back after Christmas. Um, but every game in the Southland Conference is, is going to be a big battle. Uh, you Obviously, you have to win at home. I think if you want to talk about being a, a conference champion, you have to win at home. And then you've got to sneak a few away on the road. And our first two are on the road. Uh, there'll be tough battles. Uh, New Orleans and Sam Houston are both playing really well right now. They've won some big non-conference games. So uh, we're, we're looking for a fight as soon as we come back after the new year. All right, we'll deal with conference then next year, 2019. For now, we get ready for Arkansas. 7-1, and one, these ACU women's basketball Wildcats going into this game on Saturday against the University of Arkansas. Need a huge crowd at Moody to cheer them on against an SEC opponent tip-off Saturday at 1 o'clock Central Time. It'll be broadcast on radio, and then we'll do a telecast on ESPN Plus as well. Hope you'll be there one way or the other, and we hope you'll join us for the next episode of the Julie Goodenough Show. For the coach and for Max, I'm Grant Boone. We'll see you next time.